Jordan's parents about the son they knew. Juror B37, when she spoke exclusively on 360, says she had a clear picture of George Zimmerman from the trial, but only a hazy one of Trayvon Martin. Listen. You called George Zimmerman George. Do you mm -hmm. feel like you know him? I do. I feel like I know everybody. You called Trayvon Trayvon as well. I did. Um, Trayvon wasn't as well known by us because there wasn't much, as much said about him. All we really heard about Trayvon was the phone call that he had and the evidence they had, they had found on him. We basically had no information what kind of a boy Trayvon was, what he did. Um, we knew where he went to school, and that was pretty much about it, and he lived in Miami. That's pretty much all the information we knew about him. I'm back now with Tracy Martin, Sabrina Fulton, and her family attorney, Benjamin Crump. When you hear that this juror, and, and I'm assuming most of the other jurors, didn't really feel like they knew your son at the end of hearing all this evidence, that's got to be difficult to hear. Um, <clears throat> I think um, they knew that Trayvon was 17 years old. They heard that um, during the trial. Um, it's a lot of things that were not said about Trayvon during the trial, but you, they knew that he was a teenager. They knew that he was on his way home. They knew that he had went to the store. They knew that he ran. They knew that he felt that George Zimmerman was creepy. So it's some things they did know about Trayvon. They may didn't understand why he didn't go home. Well, if someone is following me in a vehicle and following me on foot, I wouldn't go home either. Mm. So there are some things that they know about teenagers in general um, even without specifically saying, well, Trayvon was a little playful. Trayvon likes to be around kids. Trayvon is more affectionate. Even if they didn't know that, they knew Trayvon was a teenager. They knew that Trayvon had just turned 17. Uh, he was 16 years and 21 days, and that was stated by the prosecution at the trial. So n they knew exactly how old he was. So you felt they knew enough in order I felt to, they that, knew that related enough. to this crime. They, I felt that they knew enough. They knew that he, w he had gone to the store. They knew that he had purchased some items from the store, which was the uh, drink and candy. How much do you need to know? Ben, do you think it would have made a difference if the jury, I don't know if sympathized is the right word, or or felt that they connected with him. Clearly, she feels sh she knew what was in George yeah. Zimmerman's heart, because at one point she actually said that in the interview, you know, his heart was in the right place. Right. Uh, it seems like she didn't understand or know she felt enough about Trayvon Martin. Well, I've heard uh, Sonny Hoskins and Mark Garagos on your show and how they talk about looking through their prism, trying to see how they evaluate people. The thing that was so troubling when I watched that interview was how she said, in their community, they, and she almost said like they were from a different world, and that's what you hope wouldn't happen, but unfortunately, with that verdict, it suggests that they were from a different world because, as Sabrina has said, if this was their child, if this was one of their children, five of them had children, what would they say about their child running from a strange person and then minutes later there's a bullet in his heart? Do you think they would see the acts of the adult as being culpable or as they did in your interview say it was Trayvon's fault for not getting home? Well, in fact, the, 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 what you mentioned, the, what the juror said, I want to play that for our viewers because it was in relation to Rachel Gentile, who was Trayvon's friend, who, who, who testified. And, and again, what this juror didn't feel that she connected, I guess, with, with that witness. And, and Rachel was one of the few witnesses who was a friend of, of Trayvon Martin who could talk about him and talk about what they were talking about on the phone in those final moments. Let, let's just play what she said. So the term creepy ass cracker that Rachel Gentile said Trayvon had used and that you, you th you're saying that's simply how Trayvon and Rachel talk to each other. Sure. That's the way they, they talk. And did you see that as a, a negative statement or a, a racial statement as, as the defense suggested? I don't think it's really racial. 
I think it's just everyday life. The type of life that they, they live and how they're living in the environment that they're living in. So you didn't find her credible as a witness? No. I got an enormous amount of tweets from viewers who watched that interview and said, and overwhelming, they were the people who were tweeting me were saying that there were an awful lot of they's in that statement. They, they, and the viewers weren't sure whether she was referencing they, Trayvon and, and, and Rachel Gentile, or they, African Americans in general. I, I'm wondering, as you hear that, what, what do you think? I think it speaks for itself. She, she's, she, she's definitely has a disconnect. She's not saying that's the way teenagers talk in our community. She's saying in their community, that's how they talk. Um, different than her community. Different from her community. Mm. So she made sure that it was a separate mm. uh, community that she was speaking about. There, there's one other thing that she said. Um, they clearly, and you reference this, they, the jury, she clearly bought the defense's argument about what happened. I asked her about that animation that the defense put on in their closing argument and she said she believes that was pretty accurate and even though no one actually finally saw what was happening that was just based on the defenses so she bought into the idea that Trayvon Martin threw the first punch I just want to listen to a little bit what she said I think the rules changed I think I think George got in a little bit too deep which he shouldn't have been there but Trayvon decided that he wasn't going to let him scare him and get the one over up on him or something. Um, and I think Tra Trayvon got mad and attacked him. Do you think Trayvon Martin played a role in, in his own death? That this wasn't just something that happened to him, that this is something he also... Oh, I believe he played a huge role in his death. D does it surprise you how much the jury seem to agree with the defense's version of events my, my, my answer to that to that would be what if it was their child that was murdered that was shot in the heart would they feel as though it was their their child's uh, blame to blame for their death I, I think that was uh, a very insensitive statement coming from her uh, but then again um, we see that she likes separating herself by saying they, they, they. So um, from the, from the uh, beginning of the trial, she had her mind made up. You, you believe she had her mind made up from the beginning of the no trial? No doubt. No doubt. And when you, you know, I think a lot of people are surprised that once this trial is done, George Zimmerman obviously is a free man, he gets his gun back. When you heard that, what did you think? Um, that, that's, that's troubling. Did you know that was going to happen? Because I, it didn't, I didn't even think about that. I didn't know it was going to happen, but that, that's very troubling. Um, and, 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 and it's troubling because he made a statement that, um, on Hannity that if he had to do it all over again, he wouldn't change anything. So coupling that with the fact that he's receiving a firearm back, that's very troublesome. You know, in the wake of this, Ben, the other day, was on a, a town hall we did on race and justice in this country. And there was a man uh, named Charles Blow, who's a columnist for the New York Times. And one of the things he said to me the other day, and, and it's really stuck in my mind ever since, is uh, he's African-American. He has uh, teenage sons. And he said, you know, I've always told my sons, don't run when the police are around because you don't want to be viewed as suspicious. But now I feel like I have to tell them, well, don't walk too slow because... And, and Charles Blow asked the question, what is the speed with which an African-American male should walk so as to not be suspicious? And to have to have that conversation with your child, I just found stunning. Um, so I, when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about what people should tell their kids now and, and what you would recommend people tell their kids now about, about something like that. We'll, we'll be right back.